Hello everyone and welcome back to MECC Gaming. I have an interesting for one for you today. This is Science Sleuth Volume 2. If you do a quick Google search on this, you'll find pretty much nothing. Uh, no image files, no nothing, no emulation uh, software. Um, so uh, this is a fairly rare find. This came out in 1996. Apparently it was not very popular. Um, I never knew it existed. Quite frankly, I actually had Science Loose Volume 1 when I, when I was a kid uh, and had no idea that this one um, even existed. But it's a very interesting series. Um, it simulates the workings of a science lab. So you have a, basically an experiment to, um, to that you have to conduct, taking measurements and gathering all the data to come up with a forensic analysis uh, for the problem that they asked you to solve. Uh, this one in particular is dealing with the mystery of the biogene picnic and the mystery of the traffic accident. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this. Um, and if you're interested in this game, I have put a link down in the description so you can download the ISO file and uh, it's yours. You can go ahead and go on all the way up through the the uh, all the six levels, I believe, six or eight levels that it has. Um, feel free to reach out to me and, and share me share some, with uh, some interesting stories that you've had with this game because you won't find it on anywhere else uh, on the internet. Um, I'll also put a link down into the, um, I'm currently using VMware. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description for the particular version of Windows 98 that I'm using. Had all kinds of problems trying to get this to run in Windows 95. According to the minimum requirements for this game, it says Windows 3.1 to Windows 95, but it works great in Windows 98. We actually have sound uh, with Windows 98. Uh, I'm going to quit talking and I'm going to let you hear the awesomeness of the mid-90s uh, in their little intro that they have. Okay, if you're not familiar with uh, Science Loose Volume 1, uh, what you have to do to get going is you click on this little red flashing uh, dot. We're going to put in our name. All right, click OK. We're going to get to go into the Sleuth Laboratory. Hi, I'm so glad you came. Allow me to introduce myself. Catherine Wimshurst here, Sleuth Extraordinaire. That's me. How did I get to this position? Hard work. Lots of hard work. You've stumbled upon the opportunity of a lifetime, my friend. I've been gathering dirt on some pretty tough cases, and just when I'm ready to solve them, I get some more. I'm making you my new apprentice. Now, go and pick a case off the board and open a different file drawer if you want to go to a new level. Get some more grit. The higher the drawer, the tougher the case. Newcomers like you, they do well to spend a few minutes with the tutorial. Click on the TV set above the file cabinet, and I'll show you the ropes. When you're ready to solve the case, Click on the lab door and get started. Remember, the solution to the mystery is different at each level, so you can only count on your tools and your wits. Okay, I'm going to save us a little bit of the, the tutorial here, so you'd click on this monitor here to get going. So this filing cabinet right here, is the, the one that's open is where we start, and then you have different levels. So as you move up, the um, it gets harder. These are our two items that we can pick from. So I guess let's go ahead and start with this one first, the mystery of the Biogene uh, Picnic. Oh, the picnic. Hope you have a strong stomach. You'll need to be cautious. Here's your mask and your emergency kit. If you're ready, it's time to beat the Reaper. I'll be waiting for you when you've figured out what's made these people so green. Hustle back in here and we'll go over your case. Okay, so we're going to click on the little door, and we've got a video to watch. Oh. 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 Well, boy, we got a lot of sick people here. They're all from Biogene, the company picnic. They got it all once and fast. Diarrhea, violent chills, violent cramps. If it's food poisoning, and we got to find out what it is so nobody else eats it. If it's a disease, we have to alert public health authorities that something nasty is going on. Excuse me. 
Okay, so we have to basically try to figure out what's making them sick and if they're going to make it to work in seven days. Um, here's some other videos that they have. Let's see about the secret laboratory here. What's going on here? This isn't food poisoning. They've got a secret laboratory at the back of the building where you have to shower with green soap before you leave there. They're experimenting with bubonic plague. We're all going to die. <laughs> well, if what we could do is look up bubonic plague here in the database and see what the symptoms of that are, but I can guarantee you it's not bubonic plague. This is the manager. I do the picnics because then nothing goes wrong. I reserve Baker Park because they have volleyball courts, swimming, as well as picnic tables. The salespeople and the lab people, they came in the morning and they brought the food from the company refrigerator. The company cook prepared it yesterday. Stock room and management, they came around two. They went swimming first. Yeah. Here's a list of what everybody did and ate. Hmm. Came out of the company refrigerator. That's interesting. Sounds like some kind of poisoning. You get that kind of mass sickness when a specific place is contaminated. A whole bunch of people walk through a toxic cloud. Sometimes there's a spill, industrial solvents like that. People try to hide it, then a lot of people get sick. Maybe it's food poisoning, deliberate or accidental. They were at the park. Maybe it was toxigenic blue-green algae. Maybe it's just the flu. So this is the thing. Um, when you play this game, there are truths, and then there are mis, mis, uh, not truths, essentially. So we have to figure out, based on evidence now, what's the truth and what's not. So let's click on Tools and Guy with Food. Okay, well. That's a close-up of the mouth. I guess we can hit him. We can take a measurement of uh, radiation. There's no radiation, and you know sounds that come out of the mouth. So not very, not very helpful. Woman with chicken. Okay. Well, let's see what they got. Savory chicken, and she's wearing a hundred percent cotton. No radiation. Picnickers drinking juice. Okay. Ooh, interesting. We got a detector here. So let's see. Muzzle, juice, juice. Okay. Let's get a sample of this juice. Run it through our analyzer here. All right. So this is our um, mass spectrum or mass spectrum of the juice. So this tells us basically what elements that it found inside of the juice. Hydrogen carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and that is not good. That is mercury or mercuric sulfate. That's where the sulfur is coming from. Okay. So that is not good if you know anything about mercury. Mercury is a toxin. Here is the juice that, uh, that was mixed by the warehouse guy. So... Take measure. Let's take a sample of this juice and let's see if it max matches what they had in the uh, mass, spe mass spectrometer, if it matches what they had in the cups. And it looks pretty much the same. Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and mercury. This is not good. Okay. And this is the food they had. So uh, we have apron, 100% cotton, savory chicken from local sources, potato salad, and green gelatin with marshmallows. Um, yeah, fake GI doctor, probably not going to do anything. Weather forecast, not going to really do anything because that's today. Uh, let's see our charts and graphs. Toxic chemical chart. Well, we know 
that we had mercuric sulfate production of antiseptics can cause nausea, diarrhea, cramps, lethal even in small doses. That is not good. Um, picnic supervisor's chart. So, uh, potato salad. Time to get back into the office and show me your stuff. Okay, so, um, yeah, we didn't measure any radiation. So let's go back into here. All see right, what they glad want. to see you made it through, Ace. Ready for the review? Just a reminder, I ask the questions, you answer them. If I see you're not making sense of the case, I have no choice. Back into the lab you go. There's one thing I'm curious about. Not everyone got sick. The patients all have something in common. What did they do or eat that sets them apart? Uh, they drank uh, juice. Outstanding. Positively outstanding. So, what percentage of the picnickers got sick? Hey, I heard that. No groaning. All right, we have to um, go back to our chart here. Uh, so D here is for drink. So we have to count all of those up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so percentage is part over whole. So we count up now the number of people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three people. So go to our calculator. We had nine that were six out of twenty-three times that by a hundred. So thirty-nine percent. I think you're getting the hang of this. You know the drill, so let's get to it. So, what percent? If you keep this up, word will get around. So, was the uninvited picnic guest a chemical? A horrible man-killing plant? A chemical. A nasty germ? A bit of You are awesome. Tell me, in just a word or two, exactly what snuck inside these people and ruined their picnic. I'm a scientist, so I want the most specific, scientific words you can give me. Mercuric sulfate. Outstanding. Positively outstanding. Select the two best pieces of evidence from your notebook that verify your selection. Okay, so, um... For sure, the mass spec of the the juice and the picnickers drinking juice that ties it together that this was actually Ooh, out there. Ouch! Are you on fire or what? Put on your stethoscope and tell me, yes or no, will the sick biogene employees be back to work next week? Well, if we remember we, when we were reading, um, one of the things said it's lethal even in small doses, so it's a good chance that they're not going to be. <laughs> yeah, that drink packs quite a punch. <laughs> Sorry about the bad pun. It's time for your big exotic science word. Real scientists learn these words because they let you into the exclusive scientist club. When you select the correct definition for your word, it'll be entered into the log and be yours forever. Solve all of the mysteries and these words will let you win a real bonus prize. Ready? Just click on the definition you think is correct and if you don't get it right the first time, keep trying until you do. Marl. That, I had to, I'm not going to lie, I did not know this, but it is uh, you, play in the lines of You Kenny's are song. incomparable. Great balls of fire. You got some steam behind you now. Try another case or a different level. Okay, so now we're, let's do the mystery of the traffic accident. I've seen the results of this accident. Not a pretty sight. We wouldn't want another mishap, so put on this reflective vest and lay out a few cones for safety. Hey, you look great in orange. Ready to get into the lab and make some measurements? 
Super. When you've figured out what caused this accident, then get back in here and we'll go over your evidence. Go ahead and save it just in case we decide to, to revisit this later. Well, you can see the skid marks. Clearly something happened. Our policyholder, Horace Bream, in the car, is accused by Rodney Dorf on the bike of deliberately running into him. Ordinarily, we would just pay, but Horace Bream hasn't even had a parking ticket in 20 years. If Horace says it's not his fault, I'm inclined to believe him. Plus, it's a lot of money. Well, we expect that your sleuthing fee will be a lot less. Okay. Let's see if there's any more videos here. You're supposed to be on my side. Why don't you go ask the guy with the bike? Okay, okay. I work from 8 at night to 4 in the morning. I come in, it's dark. I go home, it's dark. I wake up, it's getting dark. I know the dark. So I'm coming home, it's 4.30, dark. I'm going the speed limit, there's nobody on the road. I look in the rear view mirror, there's nobody there. And bang, kid hits me. You shouldn't be allowed on the road, bikes. Not even in the day. I never wanted him to ride that bike. A person should ride around with a bus around them, or a big car, a tank maybe, not a bike. I let him ride that bike on account of he shows me this like it's some holy writ. Tells me you can't get hurt long as you follow the precautions in the book. Baloney. Okay, what can I say? My uncle owns the company. Anyway, I'm sitting here and this guy rides through on his bicycle, tearing down the lot, sending up lots of dust, and I'm yelling, hey, use the road, that's what it's there for. But he doesn't hear me. All of a sudden, I hear this crash. He hit a car, right? I was going to go over there, but hey, I didn't want to leave the lot. What if somebody gets hurt? Okay. All right, so I think we have... A little bit to uh, to go on, so let's go to the accident site. So, um, so here's where we. There's just the apparently the intersection where it occurred. Speed limit is 55 kilometers per hour, and coefficient of friction is 0.8. So the how sticky the tires uh, are to the road, basically. Okay, so this is looking apparently this is on a maybe a little bit of a hill. You can see a hill here. Um, kind of uh, interesting view. And then here's that path that they took through that construction site that the uh, the flagger was talking about. So let's do some measurements of the skid marks. I think that's about 12. We'll call it 12. All right. Okay, so let's put that add that to our notebook just so we can have that number. Measure it. All right. Here's Brim's car, so let's look at him. Uh, we really zoomed in. That's uh, 
That's rubber. <laughs> Hydrogen and uh, sulfur. Okay, so let's zoom back out. Let's look here. Small dent. Yeah, six six centimeters. Very very small. Keep up the great work. Okay, metal. All right. Nothing nothing unusual. It looks like basically like he ran into him here on the side because you would have more damage apparently on the front if he'd run over him. So let's look at his bike. Okay, so the front wheel did did take a hit. So we're gonna busted headlight. That because of the wreck, or was that because of the? It doesn't work. Okay. That's from the wreck. Bell. Bell does work. Brakes a little worn, but they look to be okay. No radiation, just because. Let's see what was. So we know that we know it happened at night. We have a question. Time to get back into the office and show me your stuff. Um, we know that he travels at night in a possible broken headlight. Um, let's see. This dust is pretty bad. Concerns here stay. Salmon spawning, so nothing really to do with what we're looking at. Let's look at the weather. This is today's forecast. That's not going to help me. Charts and graphs. Let's look. Uh, we need to figure out how fast he was going based on those um, skid marks. So coefficient of friction we know was uh, a 0.8. They were roughly, skid mark length was roughly uh, 12 so 50. Speed limit in that area was 55, so he was actually not speeding. So we can confirm that. Um, <laughs> interior of the sun, 40 million degrees. The brakes were worn. Weather at night. So winds have been calm, clear, slightly cloudy, partly cloudy. So no, no rain. So it wasn't like there was rain there. Um, well, let's go in here and see what they they want us to do. All right, glad to see you made it through, Ace. Ready for the review? Just a reminder: I ask the questions, you answer them. If I see you're not making sense of the case, I have no choice. Back into the lab you go. So, tell me, how fast was Bream traveling when he slammed on his brakes and skidded to a stop? I know you can't be exact, but give me your best estimate. I need a whole number here, like 12 or 73. Go with, um, 50. That is correct. So, now you can easily tell me, was Bream speeding? Yes or no? Speed limit was 55. Just a minute. I'll find a word for this. Terrific. Did the cause of the accident have something to do with the car, the bike, or Dorf's or Bream's health? Bream's health in the interview didn't look sick. Um, the car, didn't see anything wrong with the car. Bumper was fine. Headlights were fine. The only thing we found was a possible broken headlight on the bike, so we're going to have to blame it on the bike. Reputations are made with answers like this. Click on something in your notebook that verifies the cause of the accident. So, we're going to go with the bike. And we talked about the um, the speed of his car. Um. All right, all right. I guess I'll let you get away with that answer. Um. 
So, should Bream's insurance company pay up? In other words, was it the driver's fault? Yes or no? Uh, no, because if the driver couldn't see him because of a faulty headlight, then it's not uh -huh. his fault. Riding a bike at night is a risky proposition to begin with. But if you have to, it's no time for camouflage. It's time for your big exotic science word. Real scientists learn these words because they let you into the exclusive Scientist Club. When you select the correct definition for your word, it'll be entered into the log and be yours forever. Solve all of the mysteries and these words will let you win a real bonus prize. Ready? Just click on the definition you think is correct, and if you don't get it right the first time, keep trying until you do. Sensiput. Hmm, I'm not sure. Is it a perpendicular? Let me put it this way. Uh-uh. Try again. Let's try this one. You, you are incomparable. An apprentice no longer. You should be proud. I hereby dub thee Junior Sleuth.